Hey everybody and welcome to part two of the creating a game series. In this video we're going to be creating a battery powered flashlight. We're also going to be adding a battery to that flashlight so it will drain. Then when the battery is empty it will turn the light off then you won't be able to turn it on again. And then we're also going to add a refill system so we can refill the battery. So there's quite a few things to do. Um, it's not too complicated once you start getting used to it and it's fairly easy to pick up. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. So let's go ahead and open up the third person character. So by default, it might take you to the event graph, but I'm just gonna jump over to the viewport. Now let's go ahead and add a component and we can search for a spotlight. There we go. So we just click this and add it to the scene. So we can rename this if we want, but since we're only using one spotlight, I don't really need to rename it. Now I'm just gonna reposition this just to be in front of the camera. So just like before, what we did with the camera where we parented it to the mesh, we need to select the spotlight and we're just going to parent this to the camera. So now the spotlight will follow with the camera and we can test this if we compile it. Close this down. So if we hit play, let's go over to the shadow over here. You can see that the flashlight is on. It moves around as well, which is good. And we can't turn it on or off, so let's escape. So let's go back. Go back to the third person character blueprint. We also want to make this brighter as well. So over here for the intensity. So let's just increase this to say maybe 20,000. We could always we could always come back and increase this if we need to. So compile this. So we also don't want it to be active from default. So let's go down to rendering and uncheck visible. Make sure we compile again. So now if we go over to the event graph, we can start actually building the function of turning it on and off. First, let's create an action mapping. If we go to edit, then to project settings, then under the engine section, go down to input. Then over here, we have the action mappings. So I'm just gonna toggle this. So already we have the jump action mapping. So when we press spacebar, it's gonna jump. We also have the reset VR, which we don't actually need. We can delete this if we want to. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new action mapping. So click this plus button here. Let's go ahead and name this. I'm going to call this flashlight. And now we need to define the key. So if we click this, so we can choose any one of these that we want, but we're not using a gamepad. We're going to be using a keyboard. So I'm going to click this and then I'm going to find the F key. So when I press F, it will activate and deactivate the flashlight. So now we have this, we can just close this down. It's already saved. In the event graph, if we right click, so I'm gonna type in flashlight. And we can see for the input, we have the action event that we just created. So when the F key is pressed, we want the, uh, the flashlight to turn on. So if we left click and drag this out and then let go, then I'll bring up this menu here. I'm gonna type branch because we wanna check if uh, the flashlight is already on or not. So we're going to add a condition to this and if it's true we're going to do one thing if it's false we're going to do something else and that's how branches work so it's pretty simple so let's go ahead and create a variable if we see on this panel here go down to where it says variables add a new one and it's going to ask us to rename the variable so i'm going to call this is flashlight active and then question mark and we can see over here that the variable type is a boolean, which is a true or false statement. So that's what we need. If we needed to change this, we just click this and change it to whatever else we need. Down here, we could set the default value, but we first have to compile the blueprint. And we have to do that a lot, <laughs> compiling the blueprint to check if something works, compile it before we test. So try and get in a habit of compiling it. So you can save it as well, or you can change this option here to save and compile at the same time. So it's up to you if you want to do that. So now we have this, is flashlight active? Well, we don't want it to be active by default, so that checkbox is fine. Let's go ahead and go to the variables and grab this reference. So then we have the option to either get the variable or set the variable. But for this, we want to get the reference of it and then connect it. Another thing you can do, if you just left click and drag this and drop it onto it, it'll automatically get it. So now what this is saying is when the F key is pressed, if the flashlight is active, so that's true, do this. If it's not active, do this. So now we can grab the spotlight component, bring it over here. And what we wanna do is set the visibility of this. So if we drag this out and then let go, 
and we type set visibility. So under the rendering tab, we can choose this set visibility. Now we have this. So for this one, we're going to connect it to the true. Then after this node, we're going to drag out and we want to type set is flashlight active. So this is the only option we can choose. So I'll select this. So this is now setting the is flashlight active off. When the F key is pressed and the flashlight is active, yes, it is active. We're going to turn off the spotlight and change the Boolean variable to false. Then to turn it on, we're just going to do the same thing, but reversed. So we can grab this spotlight here, left click and drag, type set visibility. I mean, we could have copied this by pressing Control W, but it doesn't have the uh, the line connected, so I'm just being lazy and doing it this way. <laughs> it doesn't really make a difference. So we're going to connect this up to the false, and then we want the new visibility here to be true, because we can see here it's false, here it's false, this one's going to be true. So I'm going to duplicate this and plug this in, and then click it to make it true. So now if we compile, just minimize this window, click play, and then go over to, just gonna move over to the shade, and then when we press F, turns on, press F, turns off. So now we have this, which turns on and off, I think it's pretty good, um, I'm happy with it. And again, the way it looks, um, we can always come back and change how it looks. One thing I don't like is the fact that the player has unlimited battery health, so let's go ahead and set a variable for that. So back to the third person character, Let's first tidy this up since we're going to have a whole bunch of nodes later on. So, so I'm going to left click and select all of these, press the C key. I'm just going to comment this and this is the flashlight. So now we need to create a variable for the player battery. So over to variables, add a new variable and we're going to call this player battery. Now let's go over to the right hand panel over here. So we need to change this uh, from a boolean to a number and we, we have an option for a float and for an integer. Float is a decimal number, so if you want 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1.1, 1.2, 1 stuff like that, that'll be the float. But we want a whole number, so we're going to use an integer. Then again, we want to set the default value, but we need to compile it first. Now by default, you can have the battery set to whatever you want. You're probably going to want to set it to 100, and then we can compile. Then we need to set up the drain of the battery. So when the flashlight is active, we need to drain this battery. So let's right click. I need to add a new event. I use the event tick. And then if we drag this out and add a branch. So this will check if the flashlight is active. So we can grab is flashlight active over here. Just drop this onto the condition. So if the flashlight is active, we want to start draining the battery. If it's not active, well then you don't have to do anything. So from true, I'm going to drag out and then I'm going to type delay because every tick is going to be every frame and that's far too fast. So we want to delay it by a second or two seconds or three seconds, however many seconds you want this battery to drain, how fast you want it to drain. So after a second, we want to bring the battery down by however many points. So let's grab this player battery here, drag it over. And for this one, we want to set the player battery. So what we want to do is decrease from the player battery. So what we need to do is grab this again. But this time we're going to get, so just getting a reference of whatever the value is at the time. So if it's 100, we're going to decrease it by a set value. So then if we drag out from here, so for this one, hit the minus key and then integer, so you just start typing integer, and then here we can choose integer minus integer, and then plug this into the player battery. So what we're doing is after one second, we're setting the player battery to be whatever the battery is, minus one. And then to see if this is working, what we could do is add um, a print string. So after the set here, just left click, drag out, type print string, and and by default, it's just going to print a string saying hello. But instead of that, I want it to tell us what the battery variable is. So I'm going to connect this up here. Now, normally you'll notice the pins are color coded. So red to red, green to green, and it pretty much stays that way. But we want to connect this into the pink string here. So when we do this, we left click and drag. 
So before we actually connect it, it tells us it's going to convert the integer to a string, which is which is what we want. Compile this, and then go back, minimize that. Go ahead and hit play. Then, then if we notice at the top left, uh, when we hit the F key, we'll see that the numbers start going down, which is pretty good. Then when we turn the flashlight off, the numbers will stop going down. And if we turn it back on, they'll go back down again. So that's pretty good. Uh, one of the problems you'll find is that the numbers will continue to count down after zero. So let's just show you what I mean. Go back to the character. If we select the player battery variable, so just for testing purposes, let's change this to five. Compile, play that again, turn on the flashlight. We see it goes four, three, two, one, zero, and then minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. So we need to fix that. We also need to turn off the flashlight when it hits zero, so you won't be able to turn it back on again. And then we'll create a pickup, so we can pick up a battery and either use it or store it for later use. Back to the third person character. So I'm gonna tidy things up here. I'm gonna select all of these and create a comment like we did before but I don't want to include the event tick because we'll be using this again. So I want to keep this separate. But for these here, I'm going to select all of these, hit C, and call this battery drain. So let's go back to the flashlight. So what I need to do is set up another check or condition. So let's make this bigger. Left click, grab all these, just make some space. So we need to add it here for the false branch. So from false, I'm going to left click and drag again and let go. I'm going to add another branch like this. So I'm going to get the player battery, get, then left click and drag out. So we need an integer greater than integer. So type greater like that, greater. It'll bring up these options, but we want greater than or equal to. And then we can plug this into the condition and we can leave that at zero. Then back over here, from true, let's drag this out, add another branch. So let's grab the player battery, get, then we want, so then we need uh, greater than or equal to. And then I'm going to connect this up to the condition. Then if we go over here to the spotlight, grab this, need to make some space. From here, if we left click, and for this one, we want a toggle visibility. Connect this to the false. And then what we need to do is set the flashlight. So grab this, set flashlight, and, and we can leave this unchecked. So now we compile, save it. Let's go ahead and test this. So when we hit the F key, we can see that it drains the battery. And there we go, it's turned off. We can't turn it back on. So now the last thing we can do is create a battery pickup. So when the character runs over it, we can either use the battery or collect it. So now we're gonna create our very first blueprint. So in the content browser, right click, select blueprint class. And then for this, we're gonna choose an actor. It's gonna ask us to rename it. So I'm gonna call this battery underscore pickup underscore BP. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. So now let's go ahead and open this up. So in the viewport, we can see this uh, sphere here. Now this won't actually be rendered in the game. It's, it's more of a, um, an origin point. Let's go over here to add component. We're gonna add a static mesh down here, this one. You can rename it if you want, but I'm just gonna hit enter. I'm not too fussed about naming it. Then down here, we can add a mesh. So if you've already loaded up an object to add into your game, then obviously you can go ahead and select the object that you've added in. So as I mentioned in the first video, I'm just gonna use placeholder objects and then come back in later on and add in the objects that I've modeled. So for right now, I'm just gonna add in a sphere. It's a bit too big, so I'm gonna scale this down. So we'll be adding that a battery object later on. But for now, we can imagine that this is a battery. So compile this, save it. So we're gonna need one more thing. So go to add component, type in box collision, add the box collision, again, position it, make it bigger. 
now compile it, jump to the event graph, and we can see we have uh, some default nodes here for us. So for most cases, you might not even need these, but for this example, we're gonna use these two here. Let me just get rid of these comment bubbles like that. Let's get rid of the event tick. We don't need that one. Now we're gonna use this event actor begin overlap. So we drag out from here and when, and when the actor overlaps the object, we're gonna do something. So for right now, let's just print string and say overlapped. So we'll be able to see that the character is overlapping. And then we could do with an event actor end overlap. Let's duplicate this, control W, plug this in, and just type no longer overlapped. So again, strings are a great way to debug and test your game, see what's happening, see what's not happening. So I will be using this event begin play in a second, um, but let's just compile it. Then let's drop this battery pickup into the scene. Play, see what happens. So at the top left, we can see it says overlapped. And then when I exit, no longer overlapped. So we can see that that works. Let's go back to the blueprint. We don't need the event overlap. It was just to test that it works. And we also don't need the string here. So what we do want to do is when the actor goes over it, we want to set the player battery to 100. But that player battery variable, it's not here. It's actually in the third person character blueprint. So we need a way for this blueprint to access that information in the other blueprint. And the way we do that is by casting to the blueprint. So we would drag this out. We would go cast to, and then whatever your character is called, mine is called a third person character. Now, since I'm going to be using this quite a lot, I want to keep it tidy as well. So for this, I'm going to get rid of that. So it's essentially the same thing, but I'm only going to do it once on here and create a variable of it. So from event begin play, I want to cast to the third person. Then from the object wildcard, I'm going to left click and drag out, get player character. And then from here, I'm going to left click, drag out and let go. Promote this to a variable. And then we can rename this to player character. And there we go, that's just casting to the blueprint. So I can left click and drag this, comment this, So now instead of dragging these wires out all the time, I can just grab a reference from it here, get player character, and then from here we can inset player battery, like this. And obviously we need to connect the execution pin. So set player battery to whatever value we want, we can set the battery to 100, compile that, and let's give this a try. Turn the flashlight on, we can see 4, 3, 2, 1, let's run over this. It's gone to 99. So it fills the battery up, which is good. But if we keep running over it, it keeps filling it up. So we want to get rid of the actor once it's given us the uh, the refill. Then the last thing I want to do is uh, be able to pick the battery up instead of collecting it. So we don't want to use this refill too soon. If our battery is at 90% and then we run over it, we've wasted a battery. So I'm going to set another variable called battery refills. So it will collect the battery and then we can refill it anytime we want. Go back to the battery pickup. So what I'm going to do is just move this over. I'm going to set a branch. And then I'm going to grab another reference of the player character. Drag this out. And then we're going to get player battery. And then drag out from here. I'm going to say if it's greater than or equal to integer plug this into the condition. So now we can just set this value. So whatever it's equal to or more than, it will then set the value. So if the player battery is more than 20, we want it to pick up the battery rather than set it. So I want to disconnect this feed. If I hold control and left click, we can disconnect it. And then I want to connect this up to the false like that. And then from the true, I want to pick it up. So I need to create another variable, but we want to do this in the third person character. So let's just compile this and then go back to the third person character. Let's go ahead and create another variable. We're going to call this uh, battery refill. So the variable type integer is fine. Just compile this. 
by default the battery refill is zero let's just give this one so we can start playing around with it when we're testing let's compile it go back to the battery pickup blueprint and let's grab another player character reference get it drag this out now we want to set battery refill connect this to the true then let's drag out from here again I'm gonna get battery refill so we're just getting a reference of what it is I drag this out and then we want to plus integer plus integer so whatever the value of this battery is we're going to plus one plug that in and there we go the last thing i want to do for this is destroy the actor so grab this here destroy actor once it's been picked up you want to destroy the actor and then also once it's set the player battery to 100 we can also destroy the actor let's copy this Control w plug this in and compile so what that's doing is once the actor overlaps it if the player's battery is equal to or more than 20 percent it's going to pick the battery up if it's less than if it's 19 or less it's going to set your battery to 100. let's try this out play turn the flashlight on so since we've got less than 20 it's just going to refill to 100 so we just copy this control w now we're not actually going to see any kind of value change because we didn't um, add a string so let me just go back to the battery pickup we can do once it's destroyed the actor let's print a string print in a string which will tell me what the battery refill amount is plug this into here compile let's go down okay so turn on the flashlight it goes to 100 if I try and collect it now we can see it just went to number two number three and number four so that means we've got four refills ready and in the next video we're going to be setting up the HUD widget so we'll be able to actually see these values we'll also be able to see the battery drain so there's quite a few things that we need to do there so that's pretty much the battery done let's go ahead and comment this so this is the battery refill or pickup pile this save it and we're done with this blueprint so now in the third person we just want to do one more thing and that's when we press a button we want to refill the batteries ourselves. let's first go to edit project settings down to input and we're going to add another action mapping so click new call this refill battery then let's select a key choose keyboard I'm going to choose keyboard R for refill close that down and then what I'm going to do and then again and again and then I'm going to right click in refill battery we can see we have the action event here when the button's pressed we first need to check if we've got any refills to use so bring this out branch player battery refill get battery refill then we need to is it greater or equal to and then we change this value to one so if you have one or more batteries then we can use it so we just, so just change this set player battery to 100 and then if you don't we could add um, then for now we could probably just add a print string which could be collect a battery so this is just for now but in the future we could add a widget and maybe create some text and make it look a lot nicer but for now let's just make sure that this works press play so if I hit the R key it should refill to 100 which it does so once the R key has been pressed it's going to check if you've got enough battery refills if you do then you can set your player battery to 100 we also then need to decrease the battery refill amount set battery refill and then just like we did before when we picked up the battery we increased it to one we just need to go to battery refill get and now we just need to decrease it by one so grab this hit the minus key integer 
So now it's going to be minus 1. Plug this in. Compile, save it. Let's test it. So now I've turned the flashlight on. If we hit the R key, we can refill since we already had one battery left. If we press it again, uh, it says collect a battery because we've got no batteries. But if we collect all these batteries here, so we've got four of them now, if we hit R to refill, and we can refill it. So that's essentially the uh, the flashlight system. We can make more changes to how it looks, but for stuff like that, we're gonna come back to it in a future video. In the next video, as I mentioned, we're gonna be creating the HUD widget where we're gonna add a picture of the battery and it's gonna slowly go down as the battery drains and then maybe a few more things. But hopefully you're enjoying these videos. If you do, be sure to give these videos a like. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.